Welcome everyone to episode two of Winning with Beckwith. In this part, I'm gonna finish up my interview with Jay Hughes, which is exciting because we talk more about building those boundaries in your business. So check it out. Oh, I love that. And it's like that, honestly, it's like it gives me goosebumps because this concept right here, um, I know we're aligned because we talked about it in, in this first episode. Like you wanted to outline this and it's like, I'm, I'm so passionate about it. The, the 10, 12 years that I've been coaching um, loan officers and, and top producers like you, this is the concept. It's actually, it's like, and you, the way you outlined it is exactly the concept because it's usually this, this um, most of the top producers that I've coached over the last 10, 12 years are, they struggle with that dynamic of how do I, I want to scale my business even more and I'm, I'm, I'm competitive. I want to win, but like, man, maybe my marriage is falling apart or I, I just know I'm having struggles. Like my life is not balanced. So you have that weird thing. And then, <clears throat> but what's crazy is like the solution is so counterintuitive. It's like, it's like to say, well, what you need to do is put these boundaries in place and tell agents, if you're a loan officer, tell them no. Like, I'm not going to be available on Saturday or Sunday or whatever the boundaries are. A big one that you and I have talked about is like, you know, there has to be a cutoff time on your phone at night. And, and it, so it's like in one aspect, like you, you could be listening and hearing, okay, well, I could see how the boundaries would help. It's like now I'm protecting this time with my family and I'm demonstrating to my family that they're the most important thing in my life, um, or at least they're more important than my job. But it's more than that, because what I have found in my own career, Matt I, has found in his, is that saying no and creating these boundaries actually helps you to increase your business. Because by putting boundaries in place, um, I mean, again, it's so counterintuitive, but like top producers cannot be available 24-7. They can't. I mean, they just, they're taking too many loan applications. And Matt, you're the perfect example of this. Like, the way your business runs right now, I mean, you're you're on pace for what? Oh, plus, 200 million plus. And, 275, uh, 275, 275, 275 this year. I really I'm like trying that. to keep it down. But um, you did. <laughs> and so like, obviously, you're not involved with so many of your transactions. You cannot be. But but real estate agents want to work with top producers. They, they, they want to work with somebody who really gets it and provides a really high level of service. And so what ends up happening is you tell people, no, I can't because I protect this time and because I'm just not going to be available 24-7 anyway. You're not going to be able to get a hold of me at 1 p.m. on a Tuesday um, when you have an emergency necessarily because I might be in a loan application. And so that dynamic and some other things ends up being so attractive and agents where you set up these boundaries, agents that are attracted to you and you scale your business. And I can say this emphatically, every person I've ever coached in the last 12 years, like you, Matt, who has embraced this concept, although you embraced it before you and I started coaching, but those that embrace it, they scale their business. Every There's without exception, um, that's how it works. And so um, anyway, I went monologue there for a second, but yeah, no, it's I great. love <laughs> that story, man. Yeah. So, you know, I think what I found after that was because I think in, in any business in our world, you're scared that the real estate agent might not use you anymore because they want that 24 hour availability. But the agents that I started out with back then and even the ones I work with today that I've got to know over the last couple of years, they all wanted the same thing. They wanted life balance, too. They right. just may not have had it at that point. Yep. And so. When it, you're so, and I talk to loan officers all the time about this because, you know, just like you, I coach loan officers and sometimes they literally come to me in tears because their life is so out of whack. Yeah. And when you're running a business and you, you have so much business, which is a blessing, but your life's out of whack, it's not worth it. And so when they come to me in tears and I tell them the story, I always tell them that story. Yeah. Um, and the light bulb usually goes off for them. Uh, but then they come back and tell me, you know what? I, I did that. And you know what my agents told me? They needed that too. Thank you for that. I Thanks hear that so many times. That for me. And yeah. 
even that particular agent who, by the way, I work with her to this day. She's one of the best agents in our market and she works with our team. She, she has gotten work-life balance down. If you mm. asked her back then, she definitely didn't have it, but she does now. Yeah. And so oh. I think that's important that you can make these changes yourself. It's going to affect the people around you more than you even realize and, and help them go down that path of um, getting a work-life balance and being successful, but not, you know, dying because you, you work so hard. Such a, such a critical piece. And what's interesting too, and this is a whole nother episode you should do, but like this ties into like, you are risking some, but something when you tell that agent, no, it is a real risk because the age, some agents are like yours in this situation, respond really well. You end up modeling work-life balance. She ends up embracing it. It changes her life. What an amazing story. But, but, but there are stories and you probably have some, I know um, I did uh, people I coach do where you're risking something. When you tell an agent, no, they might not send you the deal on Monday. That's it's a real risk. Um, and oh, so for but, sure. Yeah. Right. And, and here's the thing though, I think, again, this is the part that's a whole nother episode is that those that, that are like, can't get their hands, their arms around this concept, their heart around this concept. It's not something that's appealing to them. And they're like, they don't want to send you the deal because of that. Um, they're, that's not a good fit for you anyway, with your business. That's not the eight, that's not the type of agent that you want to be working with anyway, generally speaking. Now, if they want to send you business on the days that you're available and, and working great. Um, but it's like, ultimately when you're scaling in order to scale to the level you've scaled, Matt, you can't do that by just working with any agent. Um, you're very choosy and selective. And if people are not, if agents are not willing to do business your way, it's not going to be a good fit anyway. Agreed on that? hundred percent. And I, and you know, when I talk to loan officers and I, you know, it's hard as a new loan officer to let go of any, any business because you may not have that business. And so if you just started your business um, and you're a brand new doctor, you just opened your law practice. And I get that when you get clients, you want to, oh. you want to get, you need everything you can. You got rent That's to pay. Hard. You got a mortgage to pay. You may have a, have, you know, a wife and kids, but you know, in the long run, it's not worth it um, to get into those situations. That's not a knock on those particular customers or real estate agents or referral people that send you business. It's just the, it's just not worth it. Um, to well, that's a good, that doesn't work. yeah, it's a, that's a good distinction. I think you're, it's a, that's a really key point on early in your career as a loan officer, and I think this is true for doctors or lawyers or a plumber or uh, a, a CPA, like the first two, three years, if you're hundred percent commission, like you are probably going to be working weekends. Like that's the reality. It's like you can put in some boundaries and I think they're very healthy, but like you are going to be working more hours or up front early on because you, you, there's no other way to distinguish yourself from your competition than to just be, to deliver for the top level of service. And like right now, like I've got three guys um, that are brand new at the company that I'm working with. And, um, you know, it's like, they are working evenings and they're putting in time on the weekends and like, that's that's okay. But they're hearing from me, the, in fact, my son is one of them. It's like, of the, where we're going, is it in a year or two, you start putting these boundaries in and you start saying no, um, and that's what's going to help you scale. But if you're brand new right now, that's this. That's an important distinct, um, yeah thing you were distinguishing there, Matt. That y- you do have to put in more time usually. Up yeah, front. I wasn't saying that you don't work weekends, that you don't work yeah. nights. And I tell my team now because it's it's not that we're not working, but when you are working weekends, when you are working in a, in an evening time, make it worth your while. Make sure it's a high, yeah. I'd say right where it's a high producing um, um, event, or that's not the word I'm looking for, but it's a high producing task, like a high payoff activity. The, yeah, activity. That's the word I was looking for. Thanks. So if you if you find yourself at night um, forgetting that you're calling back clients during the day, and that's what you're spending your nights doing, then something's off. Yep. You're not doing a good job 
from eight to six or whatever, six 30 or whatever time you're scheduled to work in your office, whatever time you set aside for yourself. Cause we're all self-employed basically. I tell my team all the time, if you do a good job during the day and the hours you're working, that's the stuff on the weekends and the night that should be the stuff that's making money, yep. not calling back a customer that you forgot to update, uh, not sending out an invoice. If you got, forgot to do it. I mean, by the way, I've never seen so many small businesses bad at collecting money on a side note. Like that should be your first priority. If you're a contractor or something like that, make sure you guys get paid. Send get those paid. invoices out. Sorry. I just had a recent experience uh, with that, but you have, to do that work during the day. So at night you do have that time to spend with your family. And maybe you do get a client call that you have to handle, you know, that seven 30 after you put the kids to bed or whatever. Uh, But that's, you know, 20, 30 minutes and you're done. And then you move on, especially when you're new, like you're talking about Jay, Um, because you do have to put forth a little bit extra effort because you don't have on, you don't have unlimited amounts of business coming in. And you well, do maybe have to make the, the only, most of what you have. that agent who's sending you a referral on on a Sunday afternoon may be the only agent that you have, right? So for like, sure, that's the you better agent. answer that phone call just to be clear. Got to, but no I way. think that. Yep, I think that when you're in that situation, though, you're not that busy anyways during the other times. That's so right. It, it really doesn't make a difference anyway because maybe uh, you haven't done anything for two days and you're like, sweet you know what? I've spent a lot of time with my kids. I'm going to handle this call. It's when you get to that breaking point of having too much business, you can't handle. Um, and when you need to think about what boundaries are you putting up? Who are you hiring to help you? All those kind of things. Well, that's, have. that's another whole episode. And so those right, are for sure like that we're, we're, we're going to skip that today, but that's another huge piece is, is identifying rock star type of talent who can then help you. So you can provide some level of coverage on Saturday and Sunday and the evenings. Although I know Matt, you and I, we do differ a little on that. I tend to have, um, you know, stricter boundaries probably on even not, not necessarily me personally, although I think maybe I do, but, um, but I think, I think you actually do a great job of because your team's so big, you get, you're able to provide a lot of coverage um, after hours and on the weekends, but, um, but yeah, like a huge piece of that, like you can't do it by yourself. When you start saying no to agents and and putting these boundaries in place is about the same time that you got to have help. It's not exactly necessarily, but like, that is a big component. And Matt, I know you'll talk about that, um, on, on yeah. future episodes. Yeah. I just want to add one thing and then we can move on. Yeah. Cause I know, we could talk a lot, but yeah. we, I have a loan officer. That's this is going to be like a, this is going to be like a, a two and a half hour Joe Rogan long form podcast. No, I'm just kidding. People, <laughs> it's not going to be that long. So I know a loan officer personally, a good friend of mine that uh, works at the same company here. Uh, she recently within the last couple months, um, basically closed on Sunday mindset. Now, super high performer. Uh, I mean, probably on pace for a hundred million this year called all of her referral partners through much prayer and, and uh, contemplation and told him, Hey, we're not going to be available on Sundays. And that's not how she positioned it, but you know, she told him kind of her mindset and why she thought it was important for her team's health, which is another thing we didn't touch on when you, you need, you need mental breaks. Yeah. It actually, makes you a better performer in the long run when you take mental breaks, whether it's scale. one day a week. Right. Yeah. You can't scale without it. You can't. And so anyway, she explained all that to him and you know what their response was. And it kind of goes with, with what we've been talking about. Wow. I need to do that too. You know what? Yeah. I'm going to start taking Sundays off. Like not all of them responded that way. And I don't want to paint yep. like this, you know, perfect picture, but the majority of them are like, okay, I respect that. And you know what? I'm going to actually do that. So again, she took that risk. She's taking a risk, right? But to her, the, the reward of her being uh, more stable and stronger and mentally and emotionally healthier is more important than the business piece of it. Yep. hundred percent. Okay. So um, I love that story. I'm so glad um, that you shared that. And I think that's going to be super impactful for, for people that are listening. So 
maybe I'm thinking probably, you know, it's your first, this is the first podcast episode and, um, and you're teeing up some future conversations and stuff. So, so maybe this is a, maybe it's a two part question. We'll see how, where you go with it, but I'd say like, um, it's like, why are you doing the podcast? Why, like, why, 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 um, you touched on a little bit that you feel called to do it, but maybe tie in the why with, um, well, we'll just leave it at that. Why you're doing it, why you feel called. And then, um, maybe weave into that, like some of the things, some of the keys that you feel like, um, have been critical for you in building this origination platform. You know, you're, you're knocking down the door of 275 this year. You and I have a goal to get you to, to 500 million, I think in two years, two and a half years. And so like, what are some of the keys to success uh, for you as it relates to why you're doing this podcast? And maybe just share some of those big picture um, because I think that will help people go, Hey, I need to be, I need to listen to episode two and three and, and so on. Yeah. Um, that's a bit, that's a lot. So I think going back to why I did it or why I decided to do a podcast was, you know, I hit this point in my career where I kind of just got frustrated by some things and said, you know what, I'm just going to worry about me and focus on me. And so that was in 2018, you know, I was like, you know, I'm just going to focus on my business. I'm not going to really, yeah. If somebody calls me and they need help, I'm going to help them, but I'm not going to be proactive and going out there and, and, and helping people. And honestly, that was selfish. And I apologize to anybody affected by that. Um, But I realized I had this revelation. It was actually during quarantine in the beginning of, of the COVID quarantine life shutdown that, I needed to share what I've learned with other people, uh, whether they're in our business or other businesses. And I just felt like this calling to share it. And I felt like I was being selfish and I needed to, to not worry about what other people think. And when you do a podcast, as you know, Jay, you're throwing yourself out there and you're putting everything out there yep. um, for people to evaluate and critique. And so I didn't, I knew I needed to do something. I didn't know what that looked like. And so I've been on this path really since then of making more of an effort to help people uh, through coaching and personal interactions. And the next logical step was, was to do a podcast to make it more available uh, to people. And so that's where we're at. And so you talked a little bit about some of the keys. I think you mentioned keys to success. um, You know, winning with Beckwith, I'm kind of, I just got a little bit sidetracked, but I was thinking about the name of the podcast because we kept yeah. going back and forth. And and Loren, who's my partner in this, he's sitting in the room right now. We kept trying different ones and nothing really fit. And so we decided on the winning with Beckwith title because I think a lot of my core motivations has always been trying to win. Mm-hmm. Right. But I think when we were thinking about it, we're like, well, how can we show people and talk about winning the right way and yeah. not just winning at all costs, because yep. I think that's a mindset we can slip into um, real easy. And so when I talk about the success and the winning, right, it's not necessarily winning to what everybody else would think, because from an outside perspective, if you look at the success of the numbers our team has put up and the the success of OVM financial, um, you know, you can get caught up in that, but you have to remember that the winning isn't just about the numbers. It's more than that. And so for me, the keys to success, I was thinking about this a lot over the last couple of months was the number one key was getting that strong foundation. And so I talked about, you know, my life being changed in 2012 when my marriage was about to fall apart. And, and I found that foundation and God and, you know, again, I want to make sure everybody understands is like, I don't have it all figured out. Like I'm still working on it. Um, But I know that strong foundation set me down the right path and continues to put me down the right path. Um, You know, the other, the other thing that I think was a key success, obviously strong foundation is number one, but I've realized over the last couple of years that I have extreme, extreme positive mindset. Yes. I've never really even 
thought about it before. It's a, it's a gift. You do. It's a gift. And so, you know, I've been on your advice, actually, a few months ago, I started listening, listening to Zig Ziglar, which he's obviously extremely positive. But one of his quotes uh, that I wrote down in my notes was having a positive mindset does not guarantee success but it certainly increases your chances. Well, it so, increases your chances. He, you know, he tells a lot of stories and, and different ones that we can apply to our world. But yeah, I think he talks about an athlete, basketball player that, you know, is four foot 11 and they want to dunk the basketball. Right. And he's like, look, he can have all the positive mindset in the world, but he's probably still not dunking a basketball. Now, could right. he? It's possible. Maybe right? it's possible. But, the physical odds are stacked against him because he's only four foot 11. Right. And so does he have a, ch- a better chance of dunking a basketball with a positive mindset thinking he can or having a negative mindset and not thinking he can now he may never dunk. And I know that's a weird analogy, but the truth I don't think of the it's a weird is, analogy at all. I think that's exactly might. right. He's definitely never dunking if he doesn't think he can. That's right. We you know can't that. Do anything. You can't do anything if you think you can't do it. That's psychologically, that's that's a fact. Um, we could spend a podcast on that. Um, the concept of hypnosis and all of that. It's um, it's like if, if you believe you cannot do something, you cannot do it. Um, so that mindset, that's, it's so key on, the, on somebody who's, who's five foot, like they may not do it, but they're certainly going to they're going to make their best attempt with a positive mindset. They believe they can. Yeah. And so, you know, I see it all the time in athletics. And so it's an easy, it's an easy analogy to use. Yeah. And I, I tell my kids all the time, I'm like, cause it's easy to slip into a negative mindset and not believe you're going to get an A on that test or do good when you have to do your speech at school. It's easy to slip into that. But if you start constantly reminding yourself that positive mindset really does change everything. And so I try to go in every day and I, I didn't realize this until a few years ago, but I used to say, and I still do when I walk into the office, Hey guys, how you doing? It's going to be a big day today. Like that was just my mindset. And I didn't know, I didn't even think about it. It was just my mindset. Like yeah. it could have been nothing going on that day special, but I just kind of went into it like, Hey, today's a big day. We have a day. Honestly, I mean, we're blessed, man. We get to show up to work and we get to do these things. And I know sometimes it can be um, overwhelming and it can be anxious and there's not that there's not problems. I don't want to paint too rosy of a picture, but having that mindset has been one of my, I believe keys. And I just started to realize that over the couple of years that I'm extremely optimistic. Yeah. So I might need counseling to figure out why, but you know, well, for those, for those that are listening, if you're in the mortgage business, if you're in the real estate business, you know, um, you're encountering problems Every day, every minute of every hour of every day, like you're solving problems. And so um, I love how you're describing that, that it's a positive mindset. You have to believe that you can and and you have to look at the day or at least you don't have to, but if you want to give yourself your best shot, um, you have to look at the day as an opportunity to grow, to learn, improve. and, um, And quite honestly, like to make the money that originators make and real estate agents make, and even as a self-employed person in any industry to make and earn at a high level, if it was easy, everybody would do it. So there are going to be problems. So embracing that and going, look, of course there's gonna be problems. This would be a great day. And um, that gives you your best shot of overcoming those obstacles and not slipping into um, what tends to happen is blame, right? Like I'm gonna blame the processor, I'm going to blame my assistant, I'm going to blame the, the underwriter um, or the borrower instead of looking like internal. Um, so that, yeah, dude, I agree that that's a gift that you have. And for those that don't have it, I like I'm not gifted with a positive mindset. I know how important it is. And it's something I have to work at every day. And so I'd encourage those of you that are more like that, work at it. There's more you cultivate it. Um, you build it. it, it builds it and strengthens it, strengthens it just like a muscle. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. A positive mindset's key. Um, go ahead. What were we going to say? Well, I was just see if, was there any other keys you wanted to share? I have a couple. I feel like 
if we sat around, I could keep coming up with more. I just yeah. thought of one. Uh, well, but yeah, no, I, think, I think you should share it. And we'll, we'll wrap after you, after you finish your keys, we'll, we'll wrap. Yeah. It. So I think the, the last two is, is, or the next one would be to stay humble. And what I mean by that is don't take criticism or complaints personally and really sit back and try to figure out what could you have done different? I talk a lot about controlling what we can control. And, you know, I think a lot of people, when you get a customer complaint, no matter what business you're in, our first instinct is to give them every reason in the world why that's not true. Yep. Oh, and, and I've experienced that myself when I've complained at businesses and, you know, mentioned things that they could get better at. It's, it's always, oh, well, we did this, this, and this. Right. And, I get that from my perspective because I know how hard we work behind the scenes to make sure everything goes smooth. So when something doesn't go smooth, right. your first instinct is to be like, how could that go smooth? Like we did, we did everything right. Right. Be humble enough to recognize what you did wrong in that situation. It, it could it. be the smallest things, but you just have to own that and work on fixing it. You can't change history, but you can certainly change the future. And so that was it. And then the last piece is always having a great team. Mm. Um, um, building and maintaining a great team. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, it's a grind. When, when I'm hiring and retaining uh, people, I put a real big emphasis on loyalty, which I just wanted to throw that loyalty piece in there because I have a lot of friends that are business owners and, and that type of thing and, and different fields. And sometimes it's easy to get into a nuts and bolts and just say, hey, this person isn't good at this and this isn't, isn't it. But work with your people, yeah. train them up. And, and that'll be an episode we'll talk about in the future. Totally. But it's, it, loyalty is so important to me. I always take care of my people. I want them to be successful and I want them to be loyal. And I, I value loyalty over any other quality in an employee. Well, I think one thing best at your job, but you're not loyal, you're not going to be a fit at our company and our team. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the episode or episodes you'll do on that. One thing I'll just tell your listeners that you're you're super, super good at is um, identifying um, the talent of the people on your team who is who are very, very high level. And nobody's perfect, but like you do a great job of identifying talent, figuring out what their strengths are, and then trying to put them into positions to leverage their strengths so that you can leverage your strengths, right? Like you have weaknesses, I have weaknesses, but like course, yeah. you tend, you're trying to, for you to get to 275 million and 500 in a couple of years, the only way that's happening is for the Beckwith team to have the, the players you have, plus a few more you're gonna have to hire functioning at their highest level in the lane that they're the strongest at, which for you means you're not involved in, a lot of the transactional stuff, it's hyper relational. Um, really, I, you and I have talked about this. Your, your job is like building relationships with, with agents and brokers and then the relational aspect of leading your team, team culture. Like that's your job. And, um, but you do a great job of helping put your team members into a position where they can leverage their strengths. And then another huge key is like, you make sure they know, I think, at least from, from my vantage point, that you believe in them and that you give them real responsibility that they get to own. And um, so I'm looking forward to you sharing more on that in the future. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, wow. Thanks, Jay. That's, Did we that's do a, it? Uh, I, I think, think we're good. I think we have enough yeah. uh, content here. <laughs> So, uh, honestly, like I can't even thank you enough. And I, I know that, um, oh, wow. you, have a, you have a job, you have a J O B outside of coaching and outside of this, you're also, um, you know, a great leader husband. I'm just going to throw that out there, uh, dad, you know, and so you just have so much wisdom. And so how, thanks for helping me with this first episode. I'm sure I'll, uh, need some help, you know, maybe in another episode or, uh, behind the scenes in the future because you've been a yeah. huge help. Um, yeah. you know, well, it was a privilege. Thanks, time. thanks for having me to be a part of it. Um, I'm, I'm like <clears throat> super excited to see where you go with this. I think there is, I think there's a niche in the marketplace for for what you're doing. 
podcast, YouTube type of presentation where you're speaking to, you know, probably your primary audience is probably going to be mortgage real estate, but it definitely, everything you're going to talk about is applicable for other industries as well. Um, but winning, you know, it's like winning with Beckwith, but the asterisk behind that is like winning the right way. And um, I think, I think, um, I, I just think, yeah, you're, you're filling a niche that, that exists. And I'm looking forward to seeing how that, how that proceeds in the future, bud. Yeah. So if you're listening to this right now, uh, thank you for listening. First of all, um, we're looking forward to the future episodes. Um, obviously, we really need you uh, to subscribe. And also, don't be afraid to put comments in there. If you have some specific questions that we can talk about later, um, we can always uh, do that. So thanks for joining us today. Look forward to the future episodes. And thanks again, Jay. Yeah, thank you, bud. See ya. Yes. Thanks for tuning in to Winning with Beckwith. I'm really excited for you guys to tune into our future episodes where we talk about business leadership. So please like and subscribe.